Um, so, hi everyone, uh, thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, fighting counterfeits from uh, the ledger, and especially uh, around uh, how private collections, which are a feature introduced in Fabric 1.2, uh, can greatly help with that. Um, this is going to be more of a lightning talk, so less of a demo. Um, my name is Ben, uh, I'm here as a blockchain enthusiast and uh, helping uh, Hyperledger build uh, some of their POCs under the special inter interest groups, especially healthcare. Um, if you haven't gotten involved in any of the working groups, uh, go check them out, it's really worth it. Um, so let's get started. Um, so first, uh, counterfeit. Uh, a counterfeit is uh, something which is an exact imitation of something valuable uh, or important with the intention of uh, deceiving or defrauding. Uh, that means relieving you of your money. Um, I'm going to stress the quality of exact imitation here because that is what we're going to be talking about. Um, to give you a rough idea, uh, it's hard to estimate, but it's about $460 billion uh, globally. And, um, and let's take an example. So to take a pretty fun one, uh, here's a graded collectible. This is a baseball card. Um, those were created off-chain, uh, really hard to track. Um, today, um, they are being graded by uh, special businesses uh, that just grade cards or collectibles. Uh, the way grading work is basically like you give them a bunch of attributes that serve as metadata to identify um, this particular card. You give them a uh, quality. Uh, you have a uh, barcode that allows you to track that particular grading. Um, and then you have the as asset, which is encased uh, with the grading. Um, the way they are being counterfeit uh, is very standard to any other uh, counterfeit method. Um, right now, uh, it's basically a printed version of that card would be uh, encased with a copy of the label. If you scan that label, you'd find the same thing as a uh, good and an original um, asset, but the asset inside is just, uh, it's a photocopy. No, we're in this case. Uh, we are buyer, we have two sellers, uh, everything looks very identical, there's no way to distinguish them. What are we gonna do? Um, this is a good example because that card, that very card is worth uh, $3,500. This is uh, one of the, uh, this is a very good uh, value, uh, actually more than uh, counterfeiting a banknote. Um, in today's world, we have uh, several players uh, operating individually. Um, those graders maintain their own, ledger, their own ledgers or database. Uh, I use the word ledger because uh, they could be having their own vertically integrated blockchain, uh, but playing with one another uh, in distinct spaces. Um, and ownership is tracked separately. What that means is that once the grading is released uh, to an owner, uh, you end up uh, with that person trying to sell it uh, outside of any ownership space, and the person who would be ma uh, managing the record of ownership would be, for example, the marketplace on which the sales happen. Um, so if you interrogate the grader, uh, if you scan the barcode that we showed earlier, uh, what you'd get from the grader is something that says, yes, we issued that grading, and that grading says, and a bunch of metadata. You will not be able to tell who from seller one or two is the person that really owns that particular asset. Um, and that's because origin and ownerships are uh, decoupled. Now, the problem with counterfeits is that they, they happen off-chain. Um, no one's gonna create a blockchain for counterfeits that is dedicated to uh, great, creating great counterfeits. Um, in this case, what you want to do is actually introduce um, a way to track this uh, ownership. So it doesn't have to be uh, any of the graders themselves, it's not their business, but you can have like uh, an external party that is specialized into tagging ownership and origin together. Um, in this case, all you need to do is uh, transfer the value uh, through the record of ownership. Um, this introducing a new entity, which acts as an identity manager, and uh, that builds the user-facing layer. Um, it's great to protect the buyer, because uh, you can have an on-chain handshake. So basically, you interrogate this identity manager, uh, you get the record of ownership, and uh, you get the record of um, origin associated with it through the channel. 
And uh, this is directed directly through your seller one that receives you have, an, um, you have a handshake request, and there you go. You're able to tell this is seller one, and seller two is excluded from the network. Um, now, we go into something which is, this is where we touch the use case for private data. Is this enough? So obviously this is a rhetorical uh, question. Um, there's a bunch of issues with having uh, your uh, identity management on chain. Um, the first thing is that it requires you to put um, a record of your owner on the chain, which makes it accessible to all the peer of that channel. So we are in a space where people compete. You do not necessarily want to uh, tell your competitors uh, who owns your product. Um, you still need to find a way to have access to that record of ownership without telling everyone. Um, now, there's another thing which is, um, for the purpose of that handshake that we saw earlier, if you try to do it on chain, you make it accessible to uh, the orders. And the orders uh, should be uh, people you trust, but if they, if they can see it, so can the entire channel. Um, you want to find a way to make that handshake through the channel, but not like without making it accessible um, to, to all the other peers. Um, that can, in this scenario, that can only happen off-chain. Um, that's where we introduce the concept of uh, private collection. So private collection, uh, a feature which is available in Fabric since uh, 1.2, and they look like this. Um, so it's what is uh, referred to as a site DB, which is basically uh, another database on the channel for all the peers. Um, the way that works is um, you, they maintain a private state, and whenever a transaction happens, it doesn't go to the orderers. It's executed with its own endorsement policy, and it's, um, it's only reflected in, uh, the, in the site database of the authorized peers. Uh, everything which is stored in the, um, in the world state, which is the public state accessible to the entire channel, is only a hash of the transaction. If you want to see the content of that transaction, you have to be an authorized peer, able to see uh, the data which is inside the private state. Um, now, why does that help us? Um, the first reason is because it allows you to, to make that handshake in a private state. Um, whoever maintains the record of uh, ownership can do it in the private state, which is only accessible to specific peers. Namely, for example, uh, you, owning as a, as a business uh, who has built that product, or uh, the, um, the entity that maintains the, um, the, the identity collections. Now, um, this also allows you one great thing, which is you record every, uh, every attempt to, um, to handshake which wasn't successful. This can help you do things like uh, vis visualize data on your counterfeit, for example, uh, by uh, storing metadata on where was uh, the attempt made, what was the exact amount that was, uh, that was accessed, and all those parameters that can help you size the counterfeit market for uh, a specific product. Um, this also protects uh, the owners of the products, since now the, um, the information is no longer stored on the, uh, in, the, um, in the public state, but in the private one. Um, only specific uh, peers will be able to access it, um, and that's it. So, and this allows for basically a fully on-chain implementation of your handshake. Um, so that's about it for private collection. So the f the, there's a reason why it, it's interesting um, and it's a great feature uh, for Fabric to have. Uh, the first reason, uh, well, it, the reason is because it's not, uh, it's not just a use case for collectibles. Um, you have entire reverse logistics channel that use grading extensively, uh, not just to assess the quality of products, but also to tag them for uh, either liquidation or resell. Um, you have uh, the auction markets that uses grading uh, intensively too. 
And this is a perfect use case that can be applied to other industries beyond that, uh, namely drugs and prescriptions or software licenses, for uh, instance. Um, so that's about it. I think we have a few seconds left. Do you have any questions? Thank you.